Welcome to the Whiskey After Work podcast. This is where booze meets business. I'm Doug Shaw, owner of Peach State Business Brokers and Advisors. And I'm Melissa Herger, owner of Brain Train Centers. We are serial entrepreneurs that love to learn from other successful professionals and love to drink whiskey. Hello, Melissa. <laughs> Hello, Melissa. <laughs> Hi, Douglas. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> check check yeah <laughs> i want to welcome you melissa to episode oh, 10 number 10 this is so exciting i know the whiskey after work podcast yep coming to you recorded live from the low t nation studios mm-hmm, downtown mm-hmm. marietta georgia right on the square sponsored by brain train centers brain train centers Peach State Business Brokers and Advisors. Right. And Keystone Realty. Yes. I want to take a quick second to remind you that the opinions stated on this show are from the moron who says it and nobody else. <laughs> nobody else. <laughs> Not our businesses. Don't blame it on the business. Yeah. Don't blame it on who's Not sitting across the, the table unless the guest is saying it, mm-hmm. that it's totally on them. Yeah. And uh, if you're easily offended, Stop listening. Skip. (laughs) Skip. Today's guest, the incomparable. Ah, thank you. The unbelievable. (laughs) The boss ass bitch. (laughs) I'll take it. (laughs) Miss Sarah Chirilla. Hello. So Sarah's never been on a uh, podcast before, so we're going to take it nice and easy. Oh, we'll take it easy on her. Um, She comes to us originally from Chicago. Oh. I think she spent quite a bit of time in Florida. Mm. (laughs) Jacksonville, if I remember right. Oh, yes. But the important thing is is that she's here in Georgia and has been for a long time. Mm -hmm. I know her from the dirty laundry business, which she grew up around. Since a kid. <laughs> and you raised me from there, Doug. <laughs> I know. Uh, went to Georgia Southern. Um, she spent quite a bit of time selling in the, in the uh, healthcare laundry space, and that's how I know her. Um, cool. She's been uh, married to a husband for like 10 years. I know him. I remind him often that I've known her longer than he has. Nice. <laughs> Love you, Andrew. Fun. <laughs> and she's got this really cute kid. Oh, and his name is also Andrew, but they call him Drew. Cute. Um, and she's recently a business owner. Fun. And, uh, Good job. So other than that, I'm not going to say a whole lot about her background because I want her to kind of expand on this and tell us where she's from and how she got here and what she's done and what she's doing and all those good things and so with that i'm going to introduce you to sarah chirilla and uh thanks for coming yay wow well i was just uh saying i've never even listened to a podcast so i'm i'm a true podcast virgin over here (laughs) uh but dougie is one of my longtime friends and uh i know this is a project you're pretty passionate about and i think it's super cool And I get to meet another female business owner, which I love. Definitely. Um, Yeah, I've uh, I've been in Georgia for about 20 years now. I kept saying 15 for a long time, Mm -hmm. but it's 20 now. Yeah. Um, Live in Roswell, grew up in East Cobb uh, two days before high school. Thank you, Mom and Dad. We moved here. Mm. Um, But, uh, yeah, we've... Well, I got to say, I've got the best community and uh, seeing that uh, a lot more as a business owner. So I've only owned my business for, co-owned for about seven, eight months, um, mm. drinking from the fire hose, learning how to come out of the, the corporate world. And uh, I, I so enjoyed being in healthcare, learned a lot uh, through the COVID age, mm. but after that, as many people in uh, healthcare are, I was a little weary. Mm-hmm. Needed to get out. What were you doing? I sold uh, laundry to surgery centers and hospitals. Mm. Um, anything that, 
you know, had to do with healthcare. We provided their scrubs and their mm. uh, towel sheets, pillowcases, which is how I knew Doug in his old life. Oh. He used to be a, what was that, a vendor? Yeah, a textile, textile distributor. Oh, okay. And so we were the dream team. Yep. Cool. Sold a lot of stuff together. Mm-hmm. She, she had her, um, her VP of sales um, had known me even before my healthcare days, he had met me, geez, 25 years ago. And uh, then we worked for a company at the same time and just got to be friends and stayed friends over the years as we kind of both moved up through the the business. And Mm -hmm. he called me one day and he's like, man, I need your help. And I'm like, what? And he goes, I need you to help train somebody. Mm. I think I got a diamond in the rough. Cool. Fair warning, she's 24. She's rather good looking and Mm -hmm. you're probably going to love me after this. Yeah, right. I remember taking her to, I, I had a golf tournament that I was putting on for an association. It was like a charity golf tournament. And I called a friend of mine and I'm like, hey, I need to ask a huge favor of you. And there's this girl, she's never swung a golf club really in her life. <laughs> We're going to borrow some clubs. She wants to play in this thing and I'm putting her with you. And he was grumbling. Oh, oh he was bitching at me. Head. And um, <clears throat> by the end of that day, he's like, anytime you need my help. <laughs> I bet. You just call me. Uh. And uh, I remember that day, too, because here, here's Sarah, who's never played around to golf in her life. And um, we were playing at the Marietta City Club mm-hmm. over off you know, over here at the old, yeah. uh, the, the old parade grounds. And uh, she teed up with a, drive, with a driver on a three, par three, and skipped it. I mean, just bounce, 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 bounce. It rolled up on the green, and she won closest to the pin that day. Nice. <laughs> what nice. a set of lux- luxury towels. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, if, awesome. I do recall, <laughs> if I do recall. Which, uh, yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. And a- <laughs> after that uh, fateful day, I <laughs> always considered Dougie to be my coworker because I, I worked alone for mm-hmm. all those 10 years, and – the only person that was local that would go anywhere with me was uh, mm. this guy over here. Of course. So, so I've missed him. And then the funny Aww. thing is, is the girl who never played golf is now married to a guy who is never home because that's all he does that's is play all he golf. Does. Yeah, yeah, we live on a golf course, and mm. uh, it is a part of our everyday life. Mm, I'm a wonderful. golf widow. <laughs> as I call it. He's golf at every Dang. chance he gets. Oh, my. But... That yeah, means I, I run the show play. otherwise. Yeah, yeah, I don't enjoy playing with him because he whips my ass. Oh, you yeah. To be good at golf, you got to spend a lot of time. A lot of money. time, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But if you are a golf widow, <laughs> you know, you let them go and you get to have everything else. Everything yeah. else is mine. Yeah. yeah. And my friends don't get it, but it's the yeah. way. It sounds I've good. It's, it's the way for you me. You let him yeah. have this one thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. And then when I want to buy a business out of nowhere, he has to say yes. That's right. (laughs) Perfect. What a good husband. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So how do I do this, Doug? Tell me. There's there's not much to it. We um We're we gonna... just hang out and talk and yeah. drink and we we want to learn about you. Yeah, and I want to learn where yeah. you are and why you decided to start a business and what your business is about. I want to know about your son and yeah. The Tell things us that about you're your son in. first. Well, um, my little one is five and a half. Okay, he is. I'm not just saying this because I'm his mom, but he is like outrageously adorable (laughs) everywhere we go um but my son is on the autism spectrum okay and uh you know he was diagnosed right at age two so three and a half years ago um total shock to my husband and i Mm -hmm. he was our first and only so you don't know the signs but at um that 18 to 24 month Time frame, I guess, is when a lot of people uh, get the diagnosis. And in our case, um, it was just right before COVID. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all of the therapies, all of the guidance Mm -hmm. kind of shut down. And we became virtual therapists Mm -hmm. over the computer. Yeah. (laughs) So we had a a little one who was nonverbal and... Very needy and very upset that he couldn't get his point across. And yeah, yeah. we're juggling, you know, 
Teams meetings and uh, Zoom calls and right. Zoom therapy. So that was a really eye-opening time. Is he verbal now? I would say that he is semi-verbal. Um, you know, when you're first diagnosed, you think, oh, my kid's definitely going to ca- talk in a year. Mm-hmm. Kid's definitely going to talk in two years. The time is right around the corner. But what I've learned uh, on this journey is that there are a lot of kids that will s- never talk. There are a lot of kids that will never shut up. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, I have a four-year-old like that. <laughs> and then there's my son who will... Um, I would say resist the opportunity to use words and Mm. use other forms of communication that Mm -hmm. aren't always easy, Mm -hmm. Um, tantruming or, you know, screaming or what have you. But all of it I have learned is communication. Yeah. Um, It just may not be in the form that we are used to as expectant parents, new parents, Mm -hmm. um, seasoned parents. I've come across so many people, you know, in this journey. And, um, but we've gotten to the point that he is somewhat communicative with words. Uh, Believe it or not, the hardest word to learn was yes. Mm. No was easy. Yes. (laughs) Yes was very abstract. So, Mm -hmm. um, that was a big win when we got yes, because I felt like if we have no and we have yes, then I can get a an idea of what you Clear need. answers. Um, yeah. So, but I will say there is no better time um, in today's world to have a child on the spectrum than 2023. There are so many resources. Yes, there's a lot of there's so much knowledge. And in the Roswell, East Cobb, Marietta area, Alpharetta, um, we have the best of everything here. So, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. fascinated that you're with brain train centers because you have some scope of what, Oh yeah, you know. We work with children with autism all the time. Actually, I'm going to plug this because it was so exciting. Yes. One of our offices in Dallas, Texas has a niece, the owner has a niece that is just about two, never spoke a word in her life, and is now counting to 10 after 12 sessions of neurofeedback. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, so she obviously, um, I don't know if they got her diagnosed with autism, but it was huge because, you know, I don't know if either of the parents really wanted to admit something was going on. Yes. But brain train, neurofeedback is about, helping the brain process better. So it's not even just like behavioral things or, or stuff like that. It's like when your brain is not processing like like a bad hardware on a computer, when it's not processing right, you can't download new software and expect it to work. We have to fix the hardware first. So that's what Brain Train Centers does is we fix those connections in the brain so then all the other therapies start working better. What is neurofeedback? It's a... Now I need to know. Yes. It's a it's a therapy that's been around since the 60s. It was created for seizures. And now they've done tons and tons of research to see that it helps autism, insomnia, anxiety, depression. And it's all an audiovisual feedback loop to help retrain the actual brain wave activity, like the connections in the brain. So it's more than just talk therapy, speech therapy, which are all great therapies. It's it's really fixing the connections in the brain. So then those other therapies work more. We'll talk more off of that. Yeah. yeah. I, she she put me on she did a reading today on me. So we haven't I won't get to see the results till a few days later. But. Yeah. So we like record your brain activity in different areas of the brain to see what is firing too slow, too fast, and then we develop a therapy to help retrain those areas of the brain. Is that considered holistic? It is non invasive alternative therapy i'm just learning about holistic it's holistic whole, yes well, holistic usually well means seeing. without medication natural mm-hmm. using your neuro we do biofeedback neurofeedback is for the brain but biofeedback like doug what is your watch a garmin watch yes does it tell you your heart rate oh yeah does it tell you when you're stressed yes does it okay that's what we do but for the brain 
everyone uses biofeedback every single day. And we adjust to the um, information we receive off of technology. So our therapy is done using the brain wave activity versus the heart rate or the blood flow or the temperature. Those are all forms of biofeedback. Neurofeedback is a form of biofeedback. That's so interesting. Yeah, it's been around a long t- time and a lot of people don't know about it, but it's amazing the way that it just, we had a, a guy in San Diego who was in a car accident, 25 years old, lost all speech. And after 25, 30 visits, he was able to say mom again, dad again. And it's because he had a huge brain injury, but with neurofeedback, you could create strength, create and strengthen areas of the brain. I will say that this journey has made me question just traditional healthcare as a as whole. a whole. I yeah, know. I think you that should. You should. We're we bo- all should. We're born into like go to the pediatrician. You get your yeah. vaccines. You yeah. medication. You know if yeah if you have a headache you take a Tylenol mm-hmm. and. Well, I mean, drug companies are great because they have created these some of these things that are tremendously helpful for sure. And and but then again, they're also we're the only country in the world that allows drug companies to advertise on TV. I mean, they're constantly pushing the drugs, creating. I mean, cholesterol is a perfect example where it used to be cholesterol. 300 was considered high and then right. it went down to 250 and then it went yeah. down to 220 and then it went to 200 now it's 180 if you if you're over 180 they want to give you statins mm-hmm. you know and and the reality is is that cholesterol isn't all that bad and, and it's not the only it indicator diet. yeah i mean cutting cutting added sugars out of your diet yes. i dropped 46 points in 30 days by cutting added sugars out of my yep. diets and out of my diet and so you're not wrong to, to question, question a little bit because there are other things that aren't drug related absolutely to, to help so many great things yeah it's so. it's opened up my it's opened up my eyes a lot because yeah. i that was always my answer yeah and especially working in healthcare you know but the, i think the pandemic Mm-hmm. taught us all yeah a lot question lots of things We've, I, yeah <laughs> and you know i think yeah. that traditional medicine has a place but i'm realizing yeah. that maybe some of the best kept secrets are you know a place in a shopping center that you pass by every day yes. and don't realize mm-hmm. is an option for yeah. you cuz i've i've gotten really deep into uh spirituality and nice. natural healing this year. So. I love it. Yeah. She, I'm uh, going to introduce she's coming to my women's group on am Thursday. I, am I going to regret <laughs> yeah. this introduction? Like, <laughs> we are good. We, did we just become best friends? I, it's possible <laughs> that this is a good unit. Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> this is no mistake, Dougie. No mistake at all. Okay, so, so excited to hear about your son and then tell us more about like how you started your business and why. And oh, yeah and, yeah. All, and all these parallels that go along with your son and you starting a business yeah. too. Well, it's all really interesting. So one of my ways to cope with everything, with the mm-hmm. pandemic, with my son, you know, my expectation as a married couple of what mm-hmm. our life would look like, you know, all of that um, was to renovate my house. Mm. And it, I made really great pandemic money, as a lot of people did. There was a lot of unique opportunities in healthcare to make money that I had not before. So yeah. now I have this uh, extra funds that wouldn't be normal for for us. And so I just started knocking out every wall in the house. It just mm-hmm. became a way to control my feelings Mm -hmm. and it would gave me something to control when everything felt so out of control yes um and probably my biggest hobby is design and I like to create things and so I used my house as a template and thank you to my husband because he was very patient with that um but in that process we moved back in after our kitchen was done and uh washer and dryer was not hooked up yet so I just Googled, um, you know, a laundromat and mm. found one like 10 minutes from our house. And uh, I remember it was July of 
21, July of 21. And I go in and this place was really cute. It was called the laundry basket. And I was like, oh my gosh, I I said to the attendant, this place is so cute. I want to buy it. Which is not normal for laundry mats. Because if you're from the hood, laundry mats (laughs) fucking suck. (laughs) Which I am. If you you haven't listened to podcasts before, you don't know that Uh, Melissa grew up in in a really rough area of San Diego. Yeah, which sounds crazy. Because, like, is there rough areas of San Diego? There are. And he always jokes because they called me white girl Melissa. And I was the only white girl. And laundry mats fucking suck. <laughs> what, what part of San Diego? I it was. It's called City Heights. It's not as bad anymore. It's coming up. Okay. But I was twelve. We moved in. Crack house, cross street. Was trying yeah. out Gang there. members. Who? Her, is your brother in San Diego? Yeah. Well, Where's my he? brother lives in LA now. But we, um, as really young kids, we lived in Encinitas and uh-huh. Poway. Oh so yeah, yeah. My brothers were born in La Jolla. Oh. No. Nice. Um, well, La Jolla is very nice. La Jolla is like Buckhead. <laughs> okay. But Poway is very nice too. It's not like, yeah, we used to go to church out in Poway. So I'm kind of familiar, but yeah. we were little. I was off the 94 and like the 805 by downtown. By downtown. Okay. So, yeah. And, you know, to actually, sorry to segue, but we'll get back. My brother moved to San Diego four weeks before the pandemic started oh. and he lived in the city. Oh God. And, and you have it was, to board everything up. It was like, he had no friends no. and the, the uh, amount of homeless people uh-huh. was just crazy. It's sad. So that's where he spent the first year. And so I learned a lot wow. about San Diego. You think it's this paradise, but there's actually a lot of hardship. There, there, there really is. And a lot of veteran homeless people. Yes. It's most of our homeless community are veterans. That usually like get addicted or, you know, the yeah. VA doesn't take care of them, sadly. But yeah. So, but anyways, we uh, I grew well, up using laundromats. So I'm like, oh, you went to the laundromat? And then you're talking about how cute it was. I was like, yes. what the fuck? <laughs> it was <laughs> well, so, well, it was very cute. This one is in Roswell. It's okay. Called, called the laundry basket. So like this, I just said to the girl and I remember just being like, I want to buy this. I'm in laundry. And wow. I left. Uh, picked up our laundry a couple of times and never thought about it again. Um, and then like five months later, four months later, my washer and dryer broke. Mm. And I loved my job. For all 10 years I was there, I loved it. And right the same week that my washer broke, my job started to implode. And mm. all of these changes came and all of a sudden I didn't like my job anymore. Mm. And so I uh, remembered the laundry basket and saw that they actually deliver to your house. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, they'll pick up our laundry even better. Wow. So I download their app. And a few hours later, I get a phone call from a guy named Andrew. Same name as my husband. Mm-hmm. And he's like, hey, this is Andrew from the laundry basket. Um our app is having an issue and your laundry will not be delivered tomorrow. It's the next day. Is that okay? And I'm like, sure. Um, We get to talking. I ask him if he um, owned it. And he said, yeah, I've owned it for four weeks, but I don't know anything about laundry. Oh, wow. I was like, that's so funny. Like I wanted to buy it over the summer. I know everything about laundry. I've been in laundry since I was a kid. I used to work at a dry cleaner in East Cobb since I was 14 years old. So laundry is like all I know. Um, And I thought, well, my job is starting to suck out of nowhere. Maybe (laughs) I'll become, you know, a consultant for a laundry. And uh, I offered to consult for him and go to lunch. So we go to lunch and um, this man that's maybe 12, 15 years older than me, walks in. He has a oxygen tank. Oh, gosh. And um, he looked, you know, just like your regular dude, but had this oxygen tank. He didn't mention anything. We hadn't talked about it. And I come to find out that my partner, Andrew, um, had been one of the pe- first people in Georgia to have COVID. Oh. So he was he was the 18th person in Georgia to have wow. COVID and had it really bad. Mm. He spent 45 days in his foyer of his house, wow. um, you know, 
isolating from his family. Wow. And um, he was a vice president of accounting for a big credit card processing company at a big job mm. and just got so sick. Mm. Um, didn't want to go to the hospitals because he didn't trust kind of what could transpire, which we mm-hmm. later find out, you know. Put on a ventilator and then what? Right. Yes. And, you know, again, someone who believes in traditional medicine, I probably would have signed myself up for that. But right. he was a little more forward thinking. So um, he tells me that story and, you know, we talk about how we each have one son and he, I said, my son is four. His name is Drew. Mm-hmm. He said, well, my son is also named Drew and I only have one son. Wow. Like, oh, that's so cool. And I said, well, my son has autism. And he said, well, s- you know, my son is also on the spectrum. Wow. So we both had um, sons named Drew, only one and both on the spectrum. Mm-hmm. And my husband's name's Andrew, so it's his mm. name. And so it's just like a lot of odd. Yeah, sync. What do you call that? Synchronicity. <laughs> What's yeah. that word? Synchronicity. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were too oh, synchronized for comfort. Right. <laughs> Especially because just that same week, all of a sudden I had major changes in my right. job. And I was just trying to, you know, reach out and think of maybe – going off on my own and so we were like what what is this it's called the universe (laughs) it really was one of those (laughs) universe moments because i was just like what is happening right now i mean you you, call you called me that like the next day i i did and said this is the weirdest shit that just happened to me that's so cool it was that's amazing so strange because you know how happy i used to like live and breathe my work mm. um so it was just crazy to me that that had all happened at once so kind of left it alone for six eight weeks mm. and um you know it kind mm-hmm. of i think ate away at both of us he really didn't know what he was doing right and Thought it was like passive income, but mm. he was used to being more in the game. Lots of people think that when they start a business. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm Not learning true. that myself. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we get to talking and we decided just on our second time together, we had breakfast um, that we would become business partners. I think we were both kind of thinking it or like, well, this is really weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't know what this is, but, you know, what if we um, go into business together? Our spouses are going to think we're crazy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, part of the thought process for me is like, what if we uh, hire adults with special needs as our goal? Oh, cool. And call it a laundry program because laundry and laundry mm, goes together. Cute. And he was like, yes, I Aww, love that. That's cool. Um, and so that's how we came to be. Um, I thought the laundry basket was a cute name, but I fought really hard to <laughs> um, rebrand us as Tumble and Dry. I think that to your point, laundromats are archaic and Mm -hmm. gross. Yes. So one of my goals was to turn us into a higher end, um, hotel lobby style, modern laundromat. Um, and I felt like that would attract more, of the population in this area sure and you know good branding as we know it always is 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 the way it's important Mm, yeah so um you know with our sons in mind as the goal i really wanted to build a brand that people could get behind so that we could one day get to where we want to be very cool. so we're still in our infancy but we had our grand opening in aquas the swankest laundry in party Aquas. you've ever been to why didn't you invite me doug 
the wish that I had. It was so fun, wasn't it? Doug should have. Don't tell her. It was horrible. What an <laughs> ass wife. Doug's such a jerk. I live in Kennesaw Ackworth. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, uh, so it was, suck, it, was, it, was, uh, it was a swanky party. I think party he was trying to laundry. keep us apart. Why were you trying to yeah. keep us apart? Because I'm not sure the world can handle this. Yeah, they could handle this. <laughs> and if they can't, they can fuck off. <laughs> they can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Did I mention the opinions? <laughs> but um, it was it was cool. It How was, cool! She brought a bus of her of her uh, country club moms. Oh, how yes. fun! So we had a party yeah. bus. Oh my and gosh, that's fun! They had a, they, yeah, they had a. They when had was this? Acoustic, when was it? Um, Back in March. Yeah, because I think Doug. Yeah, it was the beginning of March, first what week the of March. Hell? They had a chocolate fondue fountain. You're so rude. I thought we were friends. Charcuterie boards. Charcuterie. <laughs> the coochie boards. Uh, it, was, it was very nice. You know what? Next time you're not invited. You, you can come to my uh, Roswell uh, opening. We're about to be done renovating yes. Roswell. And we're going to have another party. There was, there so was you a, have a location in Ackworth? Yeah. Have a location in Ackworth across from Woodstock Furniture cool. Outlet. Yeah. Kroger Shop They're a good somewhere. furniture outlet. Yeah. Yes. So that's where we are. Very cool. And uh, and the one in Roswell is done in about four weeks. Cool. And then we're working on buying one in East Cobb. And oh, cool. You're expanding to take fast. over the world. You'll do it. <laughs> I, I already know. So cool. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, but I'm broke. <laughs> 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 That's what uh, people think. Like, oh, you're expanding. You have so many. Because uh, we talked about this before we started. Like, I have offices all over the country. But they're just, like, opening up this past year. Five of them opened up in, wow. since January. But they're all brand new. So they have to build and grow. And, and She so has gotten smart about one thing. These yeah. offices all have managing partners. So no, they're licensees. So they are 100% owners. And they pay me a royalty and yeah. monthly. I'm going to yeah. have to talk to you about well, that. We're going to talk more. Skin in the I game. have so much ideas for you. I like, like her model better than franchising just yeah. because franchising is such a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass. It's expensive. And again, like I was saying earlier, like you have to have everything kind of look the same. And this allows the owners to have full ownership of how it's going to look, how they're going to run it, but still stick to like the guidelines of what I've created. Wow. My whole plan when I turned it into licensing is I didn't want all these women that were coming and buying a brain train centers for me sure. to be lost like to start from nothing and not know what to do so i literally provide a turnkey business model for them to be able to run a business pricing list like um phone scripts everything that they need to be able to bring a client through from the beginning to the end and they don't have to figure anything out it's all done for them do you only sell these to women as of right now I love that. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick to that. Oh Women get shit done. Obviously, look at that shit. God. She partners with a guy, and she's already like Sexist. opening a third one. <laughs> Kidding me? Listen. What about and- people who identify as women? <laughs> oh, stop please. it, Doug. Oh, let's not go down that road. Yeah, let's that's... Not- <laughs> Okay, what's your favorite thing so far? I know you're still new, but what is your favorite thing so far about being a business owner? I really like to design again. Yeah. So I, I should have went to school to be an interior designer, but mm-hmm. that was not God's plan. Mm-hmm. So I really enjoy the aspect of picking out flooring and yeah. walls and all of that and making it something that people don't expect. Yes. And the know? freedom to do whatever you want. Yes. And yeah. my and my partner has been amazing about that. Mm. Because I know that as a man and the kind of man that he is, he's an accountant. I mean, okay. You know, okay, he's I get it. Like, That's all you have to say. He's an accountant. And <laughs> He'll take care of all that part of the business. Yeah. The creative part. He has no interest in that. Um, but he's been really supportive of the choices. And it's kind of awesome like having google reviews now and people are like mm. oh my gosh this is it's beautiful you know the bathroom's the best part and i insisted that we needed 500 dollars light up <laughs> mirror makeup mirrors in the bathroom <laughs> which he's like why okay. but i want people to feel like they're in the most comfortable um almost environment. home like like it's yeah. their home Light, like dimmers on the lights, yeah. hand blown bubble chandeliers, which Beautiful. was a really hard sell 
by the way. Oh, but, but you did it. You did it. But it's it. there. <laughs> and, you know, um, the great thing about laundromats is that if you buy new machinery, which we did, they last for 25 mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about people coming into your location forever. And yeah. That, that um, becomes a home of sorts to them. And yeah. so yeah. I want our um, customers to feel that. And I, it's so nice to see it come together and that That's they what, do. And it's not, you can go in there and do your laundry. Right. Or... Or, they can do it all for you. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. My daughter the other day was like, we need a housekeeper, a laundry service, and something else. I was like, how about a mother- motherfucking chore list? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at you. I got a housekeeper <laughs> and a laundry service. Exactly. Can get your ass Listen, to work. Listen, you're 12. You could do your own laundry, bitch. Well, that sounds like 12. That yeah. So like the 12 I was like, oh, okay, great. Yeah, got let the, me just pay for all of that, please. Yes. We've got that little part of each show where... I know, I drink it so oh, fast. Yeah. Where the, the guest brings their booze. Yes, and I've already drank a whole oh, cup well, so far. And so this <laughs> okay. episode... I'm this episode is going to be wine. Share, please. Oh, my favorite type of episode. One, one more. Yeah, this is my favorite guest okay. so far, by the way. Oh, jeez. Okay, that's good. Well, so what What did you... You brought wine today. What did you, you bring? Did. I brought... Um, well, I went next door <laughs> and bought uh, an overpriced bottle of Levy and... Leviathan. Leviathan. <laughs> red <laughs> wine blend. Leviathan. Um, big red wine blend person here, mm-hmm. but I buy Apothic for $11 oh, the bottle. Oh, I love Apothic. Big but Apothic do fan. you like Menage a Trois? Yes, I it's really so do. It's so good. I do. I like that very much. Me too. This is I the like, part um, of the show where I bite my tongue. Mm-hmm. 14 Hands. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. It has like a horse on it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, but if I'm being true... Pinot Grigio, which I have on the left, <laughs> is my is drink your of favorite. Choice. I got really, really tired of Sauvignon Blancs. Mm. I drank yeah. my face off on Kim Crawford and Whitehaven mm. for many years. Mm-hmm. So, Pinot Grigio it is. And then if I am going to try a dark liquor with my friend Doug, then I go <laughs> to red wine. Red, red wine. Um, have you been out to Doug's friend's vineyard in Austell? Where is it? Douglasville, where it's is it? It's in Dallas, three Dallas strands. Now you met said Jason. All the wrong ones. She, you met Jason. You guys have met before. Yes, yes. He he sponsored the fundraiser. No, you and she came. To she came. You were at the I wine went with tasting. My husband, but I didn't. That was me. That was oh, my nonprofit. You were there at the front talking. That was me. Oh my gosh! Was that the first time y'all met? No, oh, no, no, no. We we met in we July of nineteen. Each other for a while, yeah, yeah. But he hosted that for my nonprofit. I love that. Yeah. Okay, well, that was fun, and the cheese choices were amazing. That was all. Was that him or your, was, was, was that you? Thank, you? thank you very much. From Kroger. Nice. Yeah. Do, nicely done. Or Publix. It was, Which one? It was Kroger. Kroger it was, out in Hiram or something. Yep, yeah, Dallas. Yep. Yeah, they did Murray's. Murray's, yeah. They, they, they Kroger delicious. bought Murray's. It's cool. But the, yeah. oh. but the vineyard out there, Three Strands, we have to take a trip out there. Yeah, and Jason, Jason's yeah. hoping to do the show next month. I think things have calmed down. He's actually in London or well, in England right guess now. Guess what we've so. done? Our women's group that I'm inviting you to on Thursdays, we it's a $25 fee to be part of it for three months, and that fee is going towards a wine tasting that we're all going to do together. Yes. <laughs> Where do y'all meet? Right here in Marietta, like, Marietta Perks. So it's a little dry for you, but you could also zoom in if you don't want to drive. Oh, please. I will not zoom in. If yeah, come in person. And well, women. this one's this on Thursday mornings at the coffee shop, but then we're planning the wine tasting. So Coffee, mimosas, no one's <laughs> <laughs> Bing, bang, bong. <laughs> no, great job introducing us, Doug. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Lord. Okay, enough of this shit. Okay. okay. You, you did bring me a bottle of three strands, though, to my opening. I did. I They're gave delicious. you a first. Yeah, I gave you, uh, you liked red blends. I gave you a bottle of. Uh, super good. Yeah, that was, I think that was a just in time. And that one, uh, best red blend in the state of Georgia. We really? have to go out soon. I'll let you know. I yeah. would love going. that. And Doug's are you invited. married? Divorced, but divorced. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I have a twelve and four year old. You have a four year old too, girl or boy? Girls, both girls. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. And how long have you been divorced? About a year. Over okay. a year. Yeah. Are you dating acclimating well to this new freedom? <laughs> yes. Are you 
I, I, I'm the one that <laughs> left. Okay. And so, yeah, yeah. It, we are actually great friends. We co-parent great. He's I actually going to come on the show eventually. He is going to come on the show. Yeah. He's an ex-pro rugby player. I love that. He played for the USA team, played in two World Cups. He actually loves golfing. He goes over here and like hits balls all the time. I'm like, you don't even know what you're doing, but it's okay. He's super big dude, like 5'11", probably has no swing. Like He's <laughs> stiff as hell. <laughs> Well, hey, if you guys are co-parenting yes. well together, I think that is truly one of the most admirable things you can do for your children. Absolutely. Especially, I come from a divorce. Um, it was not that way in my family. Mm, yeah. But I have the best stepdad ever. Oh, good. You know, but like with half of divor- marriages ending in divorce, if you mm-hmm. can do that. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. It is. It is. All my friends have horror stories, but I'm amazing. very lucky. He's a great dad, and he's a great guy. And I love that. Yeah. We'll always be like connected, obviously, through our children and respect each other. We don't like hang out and our best oh. friends or anything, but you don't need we to respect be. each other. He'll, he can come on the podcast. That's though. right. That's huge. Yeah. I can make oh, fun I of him on the podcast. I can't wait to ask him <laughs> questions about you. No. Oh. You better not. We're going to wait another year, okay? <laughs> Let's do some therapy first. <laughs> well, okay, so I'll say this. Doug's always been very entrepreneurial. Always. Mm-hmm. I mean, even on the side, you always had something yeah. cooking. Yep. But why did y'all decide to do a podcast? It's all his fault. I, I told you I also have not listened to podcasts. And then he's like, you're going to be my co-host. Obviously, because I'm awesome. <laughs> you, clearly. But you also have a really good voice. Oh, like, when I was you. sitting over there, I was like, she has, like, a perfect. Oh, I really picked her because she was she's so modest. And, <laughs> <laughs> like, she'll you know. bring some energy. Yeah, and, she, um, you know, she's quiet and reserved. And, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Some levity to my to my to my shenanigans over yeah. here, but um, yeah. no, I think we talked about this, uh, yeah. you know, when we talked on the first episode. But um, it was just we kept doing these tastings, and the the thing that finally just pushed me over the edge was actually Jason from Three Strands. We'd have these, we'd have these bring your own bottle tastings, and every once in a while we get mm-hmm. somebody up there that was had an interesting, interesting. job or yeah. was an interesting person. And they were supposed to have just a couple minutes to talk about themselves, their business, and then their whiskey, and then, you know, take it around, let everybody taste it. And Jason was, they kept him up for 15 minutes, oh, just yeah. peppering him with all these questions. Oh. And he had this great whiskey. Like, I still remember that whiskey. Yes. It was Angel's Envy Rye, yes. and it was, it was finished in Caribbean good. rum cask. It was and, beautiful bottle, yeah, right? Yeah, delicious. And just, and I told her, that's the day I told her, I said, we got to do this podcast because if we, Focus on that. The interesting, the most interesting entrepreneurs, the most interesting business owners. And you got a guy that works for, he's, he leads a quantum computing team at IBM mm. and he runs a vineyard. Yeah. He knew nothing cool. about winemaking and decided to, to start planting vines and he hired the people he needed to to teach him. And, you know, and it's just this great story. And everybody was just so tuned into what he yeah. had to say and great questions. And I'm like, that, we can do that every we week. We need to do that. And, um, you know, I don't know what this podcast does. I mean, nobody ever makes money on podcasts with the ex- you know, exception of a few people, but um, I don't know what it does or where it goes, but we've been having so much fun doing it's it. Fun. I can't wait. We, it's for fun. people that, it's so, cool. so people don't and know, we and we, you, business we generally have started to do every other week. Yeah we get together and we record two podcasts back to back. So we have one for every week. So that's Mm -hmm. why you poked your head in on episode nine. You poked your head in to have a glass of of bourbon. So, um, yeah, so I get like excited every other week. It's so much fun. It is. To get these people on. And I'm like, okay, who do we get this next time? And they got to be different, you know, something different than the last time. And, and, um, always entrepreneurs. Well, well, I mean, our last Mark, one, yeah, he wasn't he really an entrepreneur, yeah, but I mean, true. holy yeah. shit, that was interesting. That was, that was fun. so cool. Was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So cool. So it doesn't have to be, I mean, any type of like leader in their community. Yeah. Somebody's just kind of a their... mover and a shaker yeah. or somebody who's kind of, you and know, enjoys. is really getting things done. And, and, uh, and also, I, I, you know, just like your deal with uh, trying to make it so you have um you know your goal is to have employment for for kids with uh, special needs Amazing. 
and adults with special needs. I mean, I want people who have that servant's heart. I want people that have that something extra that they're working for, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Some some sort of a charitable, yeah. you know, charitable Give nature back. to them. And and those are the to me those are the most. Well, interesting when you're people. working your like your passion and purpose, like I know it sounds crazy to say like laundry is your passion, but it's not it just is. the laundry. <laughs> yeah. It's also like you're using your creative. Um, genius to create a beautiful place for people to come where it changes people's minds like mine like oh I hate the laundromat but if my washer and dryer breaks down I'm going straight to your place because I'm like okay it's not like the ghetto laundromat that I right. used to go to when I was a little girl that sucked like I'll wait three weeks to get my washer and dryer fixed before I go to a laundromat but now I'm meeting you like I would go there or pay for a service to get it done you know so it's amazing that people's, it's like people's purpose is all over and can help so many different. It really made me believe in God in a different way. Mm. It really was like the perfect storm of, um, really, I, I've always had a passion for the industry. It's mm -hmm. just odd. Um, in fact, my one of my delivery guys, Bob, um, he was the owner of the dry cleaner that I worked at from the time I was 14 to Whoa. 21. That's so crazy. then I went back and found him after 10 years <laughs> and was so like, cool. Hey Bob, because of you, I'm s just finished a decades long career in wow. healthcare laundry. And now I'm starting my own laundry and dry cleaning business. And like, do you want a part of it? And he was like, wow. Um, I'm, he was basically said he wasn't going to invest any money. I'm like, I'm not right. asking you to invest. Like, yeah. do you want to be a part of this? And when he heard about our purpose, he mm -hmm. was like, yes, I want to be a part of that. So and cool. now he's like the most reliable employee. He's, I think, 71. Oh, that's he's awesome. He's been out of the game for like 10 or 12 <laughs> years. Oh, my gosh. And he is the most dedicated employee and now I've started hiring people that I used to work with in the dry cleaner that used to like press pants and stuff. I'm like finding That's them from amazing. other places. So it's great. It's so cool. So cool. But I always had that um, tie to laundry. And then um, my design piece and then finding a partner that was just so aligned. He's totally my opposite oh yes totally my opposite but really um I, I wouldn't consider myself someone easy to work with <laughs> yeah honestly I'm probably a pretty difficult person to be married to sorry babe if mm -hmm. you're gonna listen to this and I'm a, probably a pretty difficult person to work with um if it doesn't go with if it doesn't align with my vision because I'm very vision based and mm -hmm. I'm would you agree with oh, without some a doubt. of this yeah. so it's like and I don't want to be that person I don't want to be difficult No, it's just I mean it's sort of the way that I'm built I'm very type A and to have someone just kind of like come into my life like that that's very like agreeable and really good with numbers I'm terrible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. terrible with numbers Me I too. mean really I, bad Me I too. laugh because when, even at her old job that she had for 10 years, <laughs> she's a spender. Mm, me too. And she Doug's was like, mad at me because I have two cars for no that's reason. That's just silly. Oops. But she was, a, she, she was a spender. <laughs> I mean, she was always like, her poor boss was always like fighting her battles with the company because like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, did you see how much she spent on that dinner or that yes. promotion thing? And then I think that, so Andrew, her partner, who by the way is, as she said before, super guy, right? I got, super I've guy. gotten to spend some oh, really awesome. good time with him and um, just a really nice guy. And, but he is, he's got an accounting background. And if anybody knows mm -hmm. anything about accounting background, big spenders don't generally gel. Well I know, <laughs> with accounts. but we need them. We need them no. so badly. Like, no, I mean, you and I talk about it all the time with your business. I don't know yes. how many times you've called me and like, look, I'm not, I spend, right? Yeah. But I, I look at businesses every day mm -hmm. and I look at like, oh my God, they spend way too much money or they're mm -hmm. running too many expenses through the business. And while I may not walk the walk all the time, I at least can 
look at something and say, oh, God, Melissa, you need to pull back on this, or that's probably not the best idea. Yeah. But, and do um, I listen to him? No. No, that's why she's got Oops. a Jeep and a forerunner. She was yeah. calling me, should I get a forerunner? Great car. Yeah, perfect. Get it. Much better as a family car. Sell the damn Jeep. Yeah, she no. gets in and she's like, oh, I'm taking the doors off the Jeep now. Now I'm going to take the doors off the Jeep and actually use it as a fun Jeep. <laughs> I fun. love that. And it's going to have brain train centers on the back so I can write it off in my business. <sighs> Duh. Sign that. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> sounds like a move that I would also make. <laughs> I know. Jeez. And I'm just like you. But I will say the universe brings people like Doug and your business. But yes. all my partners are very straight to the books. Like, get shit done and I am like I get shit done but I'm the visionary also like you and I'm like oh I have this new idea and they're like fuck Melissa like stop wait we gotta implement this first yeah you're like uh, yeah you, I understand that like, yeah. Like, yeah. like Doug the dog like Doug the dog mm-hmm. squirrel yeah yeah that's but that's what greets it makes great business owners but it is very helpful when we have partners to kind of ground us a little bit but that's but that's that goes to the whole point as business owners or what we talk about with your thursday meeting with our wednesday meeting yeah having that group of other business owners and entrepreneurs around you because you don't have a big company yeah. that you can rely on a board of directors. So you got to build yeah, that Yeah, we board call of them the board of directors. So we have our Wednesday group, which is co-ed, yeah. which you're more than welcome to come Thank visit. You. And then Thursday, which you are going to come uh, and like, you're coming. <laughs> uh, it's, it's part of the job now, I <laughs> right. think. No, it, no, it this, absolutely is. It really is. is part of owning a business. You do have to surround yourself with other business owners and you learn so much from them. Good, like ba- good, bad, and indifferent. Yeah, yeah. all of it. Like, Best there's some people that have been, worst in, practices. Yeah, been in business 20 years versus brand new, and you're going to learn some of the mistakes they made so you don't have to make them yourself. Like, it's going to save you time it, and money. I'm learning and all of how it. many incredible, smart people there are out there to mm-hmm. learn from. Yeah. In small business? Yes. I never had the respect for small business Mm -hmm. that I do now. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they had those PPE loans and all of this stuff back. I'm like, you know, is is small business really keeping us afloat? But but it is. It is. And I see that value so much. So to have kind of this great uh, culmination of... Uh, you know, partner creativity. And then my son, who's my everything to be Mm -hmm. able to work towards something for him. Yeah. And whether or not he needs that lifeline one day. um, I think he's going to be a chef. (laughs) I think he will too. He looks so good in a chef hat. Mm. The kid loves to cook. How cool. He loves to cook. That's amazing. Um, Does he watch Ratatouille? Uh, actually, no, and I didn't even know I should have him watch that. Oh my god, that's the that's best movie. Not. That's the best have animated movie it? ever made. I know. What? Ratatouille. It's okay. the best. All right. Well, that's up next. Oh. That's at the Trilla that House is, this that week. Is one it's of a great my movie. Favorite isn't animated it? movies, right? and I love oh, it. Oh, it's a rat that teaches the chef that has no idea what he's doing how to cook oh. the most perfect Italian food ever. Right? Except Italian. For it was French. French. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. Girl, girl, Whatever. Yeah, that red wine. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> actually, there's this place in downtown Alpharetta called Flower Power, and they do um, kids. Thing. Thank you. Yeah. They you do kids no uh, cooking classes. Oh, cool. And I'm trying to think to myself, like, can my son handle? Yes. I think he absolutely he can. can. And I find, though, that it's the kitchen really is, like, a place where... He gets He that. finds himself. He knows not... It, autism is so confusing. Yes. It's, I'm going to say this. This might be yeah. controversial. No, please. Is when parents get a diagnosis for their kid, sometimes the parent gets stuck on it more than the kid. I could see that. Okay. Yes. So then we like want to protect them more or like get scared that they might not be able to handle it. And the reality is, is they can. It's not it's, that their brain doesn't work. No, it, it just, just works, works differently. differently. Exactly. That has become, I would say, the uh, paramount uh, learning opportunity mm-hmm. for us yeah. because 
he is genius if mm-hmm. he wants to get something done mm-hmm. but it will look so different yeah than what we're doing um think about mozart he was definitely on the spectrum so many people you find are and it's mm-hmm. training my brain my husband's brain and the world mm-hmm. to look at it differently and um you know kind of segueing but we just found out like seven or eight weeks ago that he is basically blind so he just Mm. got glasses and i feel like there's this whole new world to him too because Mm. i would have never known that he couldn't see sure you know especially because he can't communicate that yeah and holy shit the kid was cute before oh what a cutie he probably has those cute little are they kind of like um where they go they have a band around it um yes so we've already used Um. two warranties (laughs) (laughs) and it has been five weeks so Thomas I thank you very much um, for honoring your warranty. Aww. But it's um I'm I'm just learning that we live in a world with a lot of people that may have fewer words mm-hmm. or a different way of doing things. Mm-hmm. And um and that it it, it doesn't mean what it used to mean to it's us okay. as a society that, that okay. that's not the worst. Thing. Um, mm-hmm. Be patient, yeah, and kind. And kindness is something that has obviously been like the word of the decade. Everyone uses the true. word kind, but, but nobody practices it. True, but nobody practices it. Yeah. Are you being kind? Am I being kind yeah. as a mom? Yeah, I used to have the, about this much patience. Oh, and, I know. And no one can see me right now, but it's tiny. <laughs> And I would We're just, on video too. Okay. Well, I would lose my shit. Oh, yeah. We I, say we lose oh, our Jesus. I lost my Jesus a lot over the I years. Lose my, I lost my Jesus on my girls the other day. I was like, oh, motherfucker, Satan's coming. Well, God decided to humble me because I would just be like, no. Yeah. I'm not it, having this to go it has been, while on these it bitches. It has been interesting watching the transformation of Sarah Chirilla. It really? Been a yeah. transformative yeah. time. One from somebody. How old were you when you had him? What, 29, 30? 29. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I should mention, I have four younger siblings, so I'm the oldest. Oh, okay. So I was always the babysitter, always yeah. the nanny, always the caretaker. I still am. Yeah. So I thought we would you, have three or four children. You would okay. swear if you met and her mom that she was her sister. My mom is beautiful. I should oh, appreciate that. That's amazing. <laughs> Can but, I add, This might be personal. You don't have to answer. I'll you answer. keep saying, like, he's one. You're not going to have more kids, or can you? Or Well, we just kind of wrapped up the genetic route and p.s science is crazy because it is Mm -hmm. changing by the year Mm -hmm. i mean we had results in 2019 that are totally different from this year sure but my husband's gonna be 40 this year and i'll be 35 this summer we've been together for we've been married for almost 10 years Mm -hmm. so it's like we had a miscarriage Mm -hmm. then we had uh you know a year where i couldn't get pregnant then we mm-hmm. had a son and then he had autism so mm-hmm. it really stopped us in our tracks okay. i'm gonna go on record that i would like to have another child oh 100 percent. but i don't know that we will but you I hope can that we do my second was born when i was 35 i was 28 with the first and 35 with the second was she a surprise both of them were not planned okay well, I well, hope they that weren't. I do they, have an they weren't prevented, but they, yeah, I was going to say planned. it's not like you. Well, the first one was kind of prevented. Planned to not have them. But Second, just, not. Yeah, and I'm so glad. But well, and I had not planned after Mila. Definitely, Mila's my oldest. Like we, that name. yeah, great Mi- name, Mila and Elia. But the crazy Elia. thing is, is when I first Beautiful. met Sarah, I didn't think she'd. I don't think I didn't think you'd ever have kids. What? Really? Yeah. How could you think that? Because oh. you kind of mentioned it a couple of times. <laughs> That's how I was. That I wouldn't have children? Yes. Well, I've, oh, I did always want children. It's just I have a lot of goals. <laughs> it, I will say, as a mom, especially women, I, I'm not like on this mm. whole like women-loving thing, but I am. Um, <laughs> I sit somewhere in between. It, yes. It, it, like, it's definitely um, we have mom guilt much more than dads do. Yeah. So like 
when I was building my business over the past few years and I was traveling a ton and like going and doing and this and that and like on my laptop all the time, even still now my girls are like, you're always on your laptop. I was like, but this is how I make money so we could go to Alabama Gulf Shores and do this and do that and spend time. And then when we do those things, I can disconnect. But it's different than like going to a nine to five job and then when you come home and you cook and do all that, like I'm cooking especially now especially that I'm divorced like I'm cooking and checking emails or doing this or doing yeah. that and I want them to know like it's not because I'm trying to ignore them but it's because I want to be able to provide for them a better life and for now this is how it looks but as I grow my business it's not always going to be this way but moms definitely have that mom guilt of like traveling because I will say when when my ex used to travel for rugby nobody asked hey, how are you doing with your new baby and you're going to school and working and a brand new baby and he's gone. You were going to school? I was was at Life. Girl, stop. So I was going full-time and working at a hedge fund and a new baby. And so he's gone and nobody's like, hey, are you okay? I had my girlfriends that would help me. But then when I'm traveling, they're like, you travel so much. How are your kids doing? I'm like, they're fucking fine. Like, fuck off. My kids are great. Like, nobody asked that when he was traveling. No. So I will say, like, some woman love right now is that women in that own their own businesses do have to overcome a lot more than some of the men because we do have that mom guilt internally and we have society that puts that shit on us too. My husband has a great job and I'm really thankful for it, but he's always on the phone always on video and my son has like seven different therapies in a five-day span so we do everything Mm. and I feel the weight that I have to be done by two o'clock to get Mm. him at 210 and then take him and then pick him up and so that dad can do what he needs to do but it really limits my day to be a business five owner and hour a day and that's okay it's just amazing that what we as women and moms can get done For and dads sure. dads are there too but yes but society expects it from us yeah. differently and yeah. i feel like i've been able to deliver but it has been arduous yeah, and, and you might possibly get burned out. My partner in San I Diego is out. that way. I am burned out. <laughs> and it's only eight months in. Girl, my partner in San Diego is six years in, and she has to be done with her day by 2.30, 3.30 to get four kids. No. What's her N- name? No, sir. <laughs> no, ma'am. Her name is Tana. Tana, shout out, girl. <laughs> what? We love four you. <laughs> she owns a brain train centers and has four children. Her husband is a retired Marine and is a firefighter, so he's gone all the time. And a she slow ca- a slow clap for Tana. Yeah. Tana's oh amazing. And she's yes. the co founder of the nonprofit Healing Our Heroes. Okay, well She's a gangster. She's a gangster. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well and all of us are as parents that care about their children, we're yeah. gangsters. True. And not just moms. Dads are. My husband too. is a gangster also. Yes. You've got a good husband. Yeah. I have the best husband, but I'm thankful to own a business and have some flexibility. Freedom. Yep. Yeah. That's the coolest part of owning a business. Yes. Freedom. Where are we at, Dougie? Did we reach our hour? I know. Oh, God. We, we passed. Like no, we passed. We, pa- no, we passed an hour. You got ignored. Okay. Well, get, oh, let's get I know. some dinner. You're dinner. over there patting each other I on know. your back. And, uh, <laughs> girl power. This girl. <laughs> no, this, this I see why, why you. Uh, <laughs> partnered up with. Oh, thank you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it was just I see it. I think uh, Doug's going away. Like, me and you I, and have I've a I've told I've told this story. Okay. I've told this story a hundred times too. But the first time I met her little one. <laughs> oh. She says, "Oh, my kids are just fine. They're just fine." The little one runs up to me. Like, Elia, the never year met old. me before in life. Looks right at me. And goes, "I'm a bad bitch," and then runs away. What? <laughs> Ellie is a crazy motherfucker. <laughs> she is. She is a nut. She is. So. She's just like me. She Because her favorite song is Best Friend by Sweetie. Like, uh, you a real girl. bad bitch. Me too. Yeah. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, she fucking All loves right. it. Yeah, she that's great. I love her name. Words. I've never heard that. Fantastic so the name parent. is actually, Elia. okay, I've never watched Game of Thrones, but my ex, watched it with my nieces all the time and there's a princess or something in that show called elia 
and it's spelled E-L-I-A. I love. But then, so he's like, what do you think of the name Elia? And I was like, mm. And she, he's like, how about Elia? And I was like, okay. <laughs> it's spelled the exact same way. That's so pretty. <laughs> it's so pretty, yeah. So Elia is her name. Elia Ann. Well, to all uh, the future Elia Ann. Yes. Bad bitches. Oh You're a bad bitch at four. So, Imagine what you are. This you. concludes the boss bitch episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this has been so fun. I could yeah. has been all fun. night long. Um, and that hour went by fast. You're right. I told yeah. you it's fun. Yeah. It's a good time. Earlier, she, I was on, you were on speakerphone and he was in my office getting a QEG, a, a brain assessment. And, uh, you were on speaker and you're like, how am I going to fill an hour? And I was just like giggling in the background. I was like, was not fast. a problem. Yeah, we'll, fa- we'll fill yeah. this. <laughs> so real quick, um, if anybody wanted to get a hold of you, um, how do we, how do we yes. find out more about your laundry, about your uh, uh, projects? TBL dry, um, TBL dry.com. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I had a conniption. Our Instagram is TBL N letter N dry because TBL dry was not available. Okay. So, um, but yeah, hit us up. We, we can do it all. Tumble and dry. Tumble and dry. And so, are you on Instagram? Yeah. TBL N dry. I'm going to do it right now. Find us girl. TBL N dry. So if anybody has any questions, comments, uh, you know, whatever wants to give us suggestions, uh, has ideas for guests, yes. or better yet, wants to let me wants to let me know that uh, you're following us on Spotify. When we hit a hundred followers on Spotify, we'll give away a bottle of Blanton's. Yes, not bad. And not um, bad. but you can reach me at whiskeyafterworkpodcast at gmail dot com. And uh, look forward to hearing from some listeners. And yes. This was fun. Cheers. It was. Thanks I don't think we talked much on. about booze, but okay. uh, this is actually really good wine, as we it should be. This bad. is delicious wine. Yeah. So, should be. Anyhow, mm-hmm. uh, until uh, until next episode, cheers. Cheers. That was so mm-hmm. fun.